Brought to you by wikivd.com Dynasty, 1981 TV series Dynasty is an American prime-time television soap opera that aired on ABC from January 12, 1981 to May 11, 1989. The series, created by Richard and Esther Shapiro and produced by Aaron Spelling, revolves around the Carringtons, a wealthy family residing in Denver, Colorado. Dynasty stars John Forsyth as oil magnate Blake Carrington, Linda Evans as his new wife Crystal, and later Joan Collins as his former wife Alexis. Dynasty was conceived as ABC's competitor to CBS's primetime series Dallas. Ratings for the show's first season were unimpressive, but a revamp for the second season that included the arrival of Collins as scheming Alexis saw ratings enter the top 20. By the fall of 1982 it was a top 10 show and by the spring of 1985, it was the show in the United States. The series declined considerably in popularity during its final two seasons and it was ultimately cancelled in the spring of 1989 after nine seasons and 220 episodes. A two-part miniseries, Dynasty, The Reunion aired in October 1991. A reboot series, with a new cast premiered on The CW in October 2017. Dynasty was nominated for a Golden Globe Award for Best TV Drama Series every year from 1981 to 1986, winning in 1983. The series spawned a successful line of fashion and luxury products, and also a spin-off series called The Colbys. Other notable cast members included Pamela Sue Martin, Lloyd Bochner, Heather Locklear, Catherine Oxenberg, Michael Nader, Diahan Carroll, Emma Sams, Rock Hudson, Kate O'Mara, and Stephanie Beecham. Development Aaron Spelling, already well known for his successful ABC series including Starsky and Hutch, Charlie's Angels, The Love Boat, Fantasy Island, Vega Dollar, and Heart to Heart took on Richard and Esther Shapiro's vision of a rich and powerful family who lived in Sind, in a 48-room Denver mansion. Esther Shapiro said that an inspiration for the show was I, Claudius, a fictionalized depiction of the Julio-Claudian dynasty of Roman emperors. Shapiro said in 1985, We wanted to do something that would be fun and American fantasy. We thought people had seen enough stories where families fell apart. We wanted a strong, 19th century sort of family where people were in conflict, but loved each other in spite of everything. Intended by ABC to be a competitor for CBS's Dallas. The working title for Dynasty was Oil. In early drafts of the pilot script, the two main families featured in the series were known as the Parkhursts and Corbys. By the time production began they had been renamed the Carringtons and Colbys. George Peppard was cast as series patriarch Blake Carrington, but ultimately had difficulties dealing with the somewhat unsympathetic role, and was quickly replaced with John Forsyth. Filmed in 1980 the pilot was among many delayed due to a strike precipitated by animosity between the television networks and the partnership of the Screen Actors Guild and the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. Dynasty finally premiered on ABC as a three-hour event on January 12, 1981. The Carringtons As Dynasty begins on January 12, 1981, powerful oil tycoon Blake Carrington is about to marry the younger Crystal Jennings, his former secretary beautiful earnest and new. To Blake's world, Crystal finds a hostile reception in the Carrington household. The staff patronizes her, and Blake's headstrong and promiscuous daughter Fallon resents her. Though devoted to Crystal, Blake himself is too preoccupied with his company Denver Carrington and blind. To Crystal's predicament, her only ally is her stepson Stephen whose complicated relationship 
with Blake stems from their fundamental political differences and Stephen's resistance to step into his role as future leader of the Carrington Empire. Meanwhile, Fallen, better suited to follow in Blake's footsteps, is underestimated by and considered little more than a trophy. To her father, she channels her energies into toying with various male suitors, including the Carrington show for Michael Culhane. At the end of the three hour premiere episode, Oil Stephen finally confronts his father criticizing Blake's capitalistic values and seemingly amoral business practices. Blake explodes, revealing the secret of which Stephen thought his father was unaware. Blake is disgusted by Stephen's homosexuality and his refusal to conform sets father and son at odds for some time. In counterpoint to the Carringtons of the Blaisdells, Denver Carrington geologist Matthew, unhappily married to the emotionally fragile Claudia, is Crystal's ex-lover. Returning from an extended assignment in the Middle East, Matthew quits and goes into business with wildcatter Walter Lancashire and as Blake's behavior begins pushing Crystal toward Matthew. The men are set as both business and romantic rivals. Blake is further enraged when Stephen goes to work for a longtime friend Matthew in whom Stephen sees qualities lacking in Blake. Though previously in a relationship with another man Stephen finds himself drawn to Claudia, who is putting her life back together after spending time in a psychiatric hospital. Esther Shapiro later said on the DVD of the first season, the audience told us almost immediately, all they wanted to do was be in the mansion. They couldn't care less about the oil fields. They didn't want to see grubby rooms. Fallon makes a secret business deal with Blake's old friend, and more powerful business rival Cecil Colby marrying his nephew Jeff, to secure Cecil's financial assistance for her father. When Blake stumbles upon Stephen in an innocent goodbye embrace with his former lover Ted Dinard, Blake angrily pushes the two men apart. Ted falls backward and hits his head. The injury proving fatal, Blake is arrested and charged with murder, and an angry Stephen testifies that Ted's death had been the result of malicious intent. A veiled surprise witness for the prosecution appears in the season finale The Testimony, and Fallon gasps in recognition, Oh my God, that's my mother. End to Alexis. In the first episode of the second season titled Enter Alexis, the mysterious witness removes her sunglasses to reveal British actress Joan Collins as a new arrival to the series. Collins Alexis Carrington blazed a trail across the show and its storylines. The additions of Collins and the formidable writing team of Eileen and Robert Mason Pollock are generally credited, with Dynasty subsequent rise in the Nielsen ratings. The Pollocks soft peddled the business angle of the show and bombarded viewers with every soap opera staple in the book presented at such a fast clip that a new tragedy seemed to befall the Carrington family every five minutes. Alexis' testimony notwithstanding, Crystal is immediately put off by the former Mrs. Carrington's condescending attitude and manipulations. Crystal's subsequent discovery that Alexis had caused her miscarriage by intentionally startling her horse with a gunshot settles Alexis as Crystal's implacable nemesis. Other new characters of the season are the psychiatrist Nick Toscani who tries to seduce Crystal while bedding Fallon and plotting against Blake, and Crystal's greedy niece Sammy Jo Dean who marries Stephen for his money. The season finale sees Blake left for dead on a mountain after a fight with Nick. By that time, Dynasty had entered the top 20. In the third season Alexis marries Cecil on his deathbed and acquires his company Colby Co. In the meantime Adam Carrington, the long-lost son of Alexis, and Blake who had been kidnapped in infancy reappears in Denver and almost starts an affair with Fallen who is running Blake's Hotel Le Mirage before they discover they are siblings. 
also introduced to Crystal's ex-husband tennis pro Mark Jennings and Kirby Anders, the daughter of longtime Carrington major Domo Joseph. Kirby catches Adam's eye, but weds Jeff after his divorce from Fallon. In the middle of the season, news that Stephen has been killed in an accident in Indonesia comes to the Carringtons, he survives, but undergoes plastic surgery and returns to Denver. In the third season cliffhanger, Alexis lures Crystal to Stephen's cabin and the two are locked inside while the cabin is set ablaze by an unseen arsonist. With the show's popularity soaring in the fourth season, former President Gerald Ford guest starred as himself in 1983 along with his wife Betty and former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. New characters included the charming and ambitious Farnsworth Dex Dexter the scheming public relations assistant Tracy Kendall the unscrupulous playboy Peter de Vilbus and Blake's illegitimate African-American half-sister, Dominique Devereaux. The main storylines included a custody battle between Stephen and Blake, over Stephen and Sammy Joss' son Danny, and a false accusation of illegal weapons dealings orchestrated by Alexis, to ruin Blake's financial empire. In the season finale, Fallon disappears just before her second wedding to Jeff as her car seemingly collides with a truck on a stormy night while Alexis is arrested for the murder of Mark Jennings, driven by the new head writer and producer Camille Marquetta who had devised the wildly successful Who Shot J.R. scenario on Dallas five years earlier dynasty hit in the fifth season. In the story Alexis is exonerated and her secret daughter Amanda Bedford comes to Denver and discovers that Blake is her father. Stephen has married Claudia but leaves her for a man, and Claudia starts an affair with Adam. The marriage of Blake and Crystal is in crisis after the birth of their daughter Christina Dominique struggles to be accepted as a Carrington and loses her husband Brady Lloyd in the process and Sammy Jo discovers she is the heiress to a huge fortune. At the end of the season, an amnesiac fallen reappears while the rest of the family go to Europe for the wedding of Amanda and Prince Michael of Moldavia. During the season dynasty attracted controversy, when Rock Hudson's real-life HIV-positive status was revealed after a romantic storyline between his character Daniel Reese and Evans Crystal. Hudson's scenes required him to kiss Evans and, as news that he had contracted AIDS broke there was speculation Evans would be at risk. The event led to a Screen Actors Guild rule requiring contracts to notify performers in advance of any scenes that require open-mouth kissing. Over the run of the series the rivalry between Alexis and Crystal is a primary driver for the melodrama, Alexis resents Crystal's role as Blake's wife and as mistress of the Carrington household and tries to undermine her at every opportunity, while Crystal makes increasingly bold efforts to keep Alexis from interfering in the lives of their mutual loved ones. The pair have numerous verbal spats that sometimes led to physical altercations. Unfortunately, the thing people remember about this show is the cat fights noted Collins in 1991. Crystal and Alexis famously brawl for the first time in Alexis' studio and then later in a lily pond. They also hurl mud at each other at a beauty salon and slide down a ravine together into a puddle of mud before having their final showdown brawl in a fashion studio in the 1991 miniseries Dynasty, the reunion. Later in the series Alexis also has a catfight with Blake's half-sister Domink, and then fights her own cousin Sable. She even has a brawl with her on-again off-again lover, and one-time husband Dex. Sammy Jo also has her fair share of catfights as she first engages in a slap fight with Claudia before taking on Amanda in a brawl in a swimming pool. Sammy Joe then later fights Fallen in a horse trough and the mud around it, 
Evans even battles with herself at the climax of a 1985-1986 storyline in which Crystal is imprisoned and replaced by a lookalike named Rita. Crystal ends up battling Rita in order to escape. In 2008, Entertainment Weekly termed Alexis and Crystal's cap fights the gold standard of scratching and clawing. The Moldavian Massacre Undoubtedly the most famous dynasty cliffhanger is the so-called Moldavian Massacre. During the May 15, 1985 fifth season finale, Amanda and Prince Michael's royal wedding is interrupted by terrorists during a military coup in Moldavia, riddling the chapel with bullets and leaving all of the major characters lying seemingly lifeless. Esther Shapiro later said it was a fairy tale terrorist attack. It was beautifully shot, like a Goya painting. It became the most talked about episode of any TV series. During the calendar year of 1985 with a viewership of 60 million. In 2011, Ken Tucker of Entertainment Weekly named it one of the seven unforgettable cliffhangers of primetime dramatic television. When the series resumed on September 25, 1985, viewers quickly learned that only two minor characters of the series had died, Stephen's boyfriend, Luke Fuller who was mortally wounded saving Claudia's life, and Jeff's love interest Lady Ashley Mitchell. In the 2006 CBS special dynasty reunion, Catfights, follow-up that was the letdown not the cliffhanger itself. John James stated in the 2001 episode of E! The True Hollywood Story featuring Dynasty that the Moldavian Massacre was when the show maxed out and overdosed on outrageousness. Creator Esther Shapiro stated in 2001 that she thought the cliffhanger was well produced, but that they could have done something else. Joan Collins was conspicuously absent. From the season 6 opener, she was in a tense contract renegotiation with the show, seeking an increased salary. As a result, the first episode had to be rewritten to explain her absence and many of Alexis' scenes were given to Crystal. Collins' demands were met and she returned to the series in the season's second episode. Despite Collins' absence, the first episode of season 6 garnered a 28.1 rating as viewers wanted to see who survived the season 5 cliffhanger. Continuing seasons in decline Although still a top 10 series, Dynasty dropped from 1st to 7th place in the ratings for its sixth season which featured a look-alike woman named Rita who poses as Crystal introduced Alexa's sister Caress and launched the spin-off series The Colbys. Spurned by Blake, Alexis finds his estranged brother Ben and the duo successfully plot to strip Blake of his fortune. Stephen's budding relationship with the closeted Bart Fulmont is ruined by Adam's business-motivated public revelation that Bart is gay. Amanda, who has divorced Prince Michael fights with Sammy Joe for the favors of Clay Fulmont. The May 21, 1986 season finale finds Blake strangling Alexis while the rest of the cast is in peril. At the Le Mirage Hotel which has been accidentally set afire by Claudia. As the seventh season begins in September 1986 Blake stops short of killing Alexis whom he had been strangling in the previous season's cliffhanger, after learning she had bought his mansion and was evicting him and Crystal. Claudia has died in the fire she set and Amanda is rescued by a returning Michael Culhane, Blake's chauffeur from the first season. Blake turns the tables on Ben and Alexis, and recovers his wealth but loses his memory after an oil rig explosion. Alexis finds Blake and with everyone believing he is dead perpetuates the belief that they are still married. Living with a clean slate Alexis finds herself softening to Blake, but ultimately tells him the truth as he reunites with Crystal. Christina receives a heart transplant but is later temporarily kidnapped by Sarah Curtis. 
the mother of the dead girl from whom Christina received her new heart. Sammy Joss' marriage to Clay crumbles and she falls into bed with Stephen. Amanda leaves town, and Ben's daughter Leslie arrives. Adam's season-long romance with Blake's secretary Dana Waring culminates in a wedding which is punctuated in the May 6, 1987 season finale by Alexis Carr plunging off a bridge into a river and the violent return of a vengeful Matthew Blaisdell. Although the first episode of season 7 premiered with a high Nielsen rating of a 20.1, the competition with Magnum P.I. now in the same time slot and the constant storyline changes led to Dynasty falling out of the top 20 to 5, with the Colbys cancelled Jeff and Fallon return. For Dynasty 8th season their marriage falling apart again. Matthew returned from the dead, but troubled by headaches holds the Carringtons hostage in hopes that Crystal will run away. With him, Stephen ends the siege by reluctantly stabbing his old friend to death. Alexis is saved by a handsome mysterious stranger Sean Rowan. She later marries him, not realizing that he is Joseph's son and Kirby's brother bent on revenge. Stephen and Sammy Joss' reconciliation is short-lived and the pursuit of children unravels Adam and Dana's marriage. Sean begins to manipulate and destroy the Carringtons from the inside, and he fights Dex to the death in the March 30, 1988 season finale. Blake, who failed being elected as governor of Colorado comes home to find Crystal missing and their bedroom in shambles. For the first time since its debut, the show had dropped out of the top 30 to 1 in the ratings. The ninth and final 1988-89 season brought a move from Wednesday to Thursday. A new executive supervising producer David Paulson who took over the plotting of the series. In a money-saving move, Evans appeared in only six episodes early in the season as an ailing crystal seeks brain surgery in Switzerland but is left in an off-screen coma. Similarly to cut costs, Collins was contracted for only 13 out of the season's 22 episodes. Former Colby's character Sable was brought in as both a platonic confidant for Blake and a nemesis for Alexis and Tracy Scoggins also reprised her Colby's role as Sable's daughter Monica. A storyline involving a murder and an old secret tying the Carrington Colby and Dexter families together spanned the season as Alexis and Sable sparred first over business and then over Dex. Ratings however continued to decline and were further exacerbated by the change in time slot as the series was in competition. With a strong NBC Thursday primetime lineup, The Cosby Show, which had supplanted Dynasty as the show on television in 1986, continued to hold that lead. In May 1989, new ABC Entertainment president Robert Ayager cancelled Dynasty, making the last episode of season 9 the series finale. The show ended on a cliffhanger with Blake Fall and Christina Alexis and Dex in Mortal Peril. Reunion Miniseries With the series cancelled in 1989 the final episode was initially left unresolved. As an attempt to wrap up to these loose plot lines ABC produced a two-part miniseries entitled Dynasty, The Reunion, which aired in October 1991. Many of the cast members including John Forsyth, Joan Collins, John James Heather Locklear and Emma Sams agreed to reprise their roles in early 1991. It was unknown during pre-production which characters the reunion film would include. Linda Evans was brought back last minute just before the final script was penned, as was Kathleen Bella. Jack Coleman, who had played Stephen Carrington from 1982 to 1988, turned down the offer to reprise his role so he was replaced with Al Corley, who originated the part in 1981. Gordon Thompson also originally agreed to appear in the film, 
but ABC refused to align the shooting schedule with his work on the daytime series Santa Barbara, and replaced him with Robin Sachs. Dynasty. The reunion aired on October 20 and October 22, 1991. The first night averaged 23 million viewers, the second night averaged 20.3 million. Critical reviews were not favorable, with many feeling the script was poor, and that the film was merely an attempt of ABC's wish to cash in on an old series. Production The Filoli Estate in Woodside, California was used as the 48-room Carrington Mansion in the opening credits establishing shots and some outdoor scenes in the pilot episode. Some of the other exterior shots of the Carrington Mansion were shot at a 17-room Palladian house called Arden Villa in Pasadena, California. Costume designer Nolan Miller designed approximately 3,000 costumes over the course of the series saying, I never want to see them wearing the same outfit twice. His weekly wardrobe budget was $35,000. John Forsyth was the only cast member to appear in all 220 episodes of the series. Linda Evans appeared in 204 of the 220 episodes, leaving the series after appearing in only six episodes of the ninth and final season. Joan Collins, who did not join the cast until the second season, also missed one episode in season six and nine episodes in season nine, and was consequently present for a total of 195 episodes. Forsyth and John James were the only two original cast members to appear in the final episode. U.S. Nielsen Ratings Dynasty was a top 30 show from its first through seventh seasons reaching for the 1984-85 season, with a Nielsen rating of 25.0 or an average tune in audience of 21.2 million homes per episode. In 2012 the New York Times credited the popularity of Nolan Miller's costumes with setting a trend for thick shoulder pads during a decade of power dressing spin-offs and television events. A spin-off The Colbys debuted in 1985 as Fallon returned from the dead. An ex-husband Jeff followed her to Los Angeles, where they became embroiled in the family intrigues of Jeff's wealthy California relatives. Pamela Sue Martin had been asked to reprise the role of Fallon but declined which led to the casting of Emma Sams in the role. Ratings for The Colbys were poor and the show lasted for just two seasons ending in 1987. Both Fallon and Jeff returned to Dynasty after the series ended. The cable channel SoapNet aired repeats of all nine seasons. In January 2004 creator Esther Shapiro participated in a marathon of the show's episodes called Serial Bowl, Alexis vs. Crystal giving behind-the-scenes tidbits and factoids. On January 2, 2005, ABC aired a fictionalized television movie entitled Dynasty, The Making of a Guilty Pleasure, chronicling the creation and backstage details of Dynasty. It received poor reviews both for content and for historical accuracy and was criticized by Forsyth Evans and Collins in separate press releases filmed in Australia. The movie starred Bartholomew John as Forsyth, Melora Hardin as Evans and Alice Creech as Collins. The film begins with a disclaimer noting the inclusion of time compression and composite and fictionalized characters and incidents and takes dramatic license with both the historical timeline and events, as well as the fictional storylines originally presented on Dynasty. On May 2, 2006, a non-fiction television special named Dynasty Reunion, Catfights. It assembled former cast members from the series including John Forsyth, Joan Collins, and Linda Evans as well as the four original actors who played the Carrington children. Heather Locklear, John James and Diane Carroll declined to participate.
but cast members Pamela Bellwood and Emma Sams were included in pre-recorded interviews. The special showed various clips from the series. As the cast reminisced about their time on the show, the special was filmed at the Filoli Estate, the location originally used for exterior shots of the Carrington's mansion in the series. On January 26, 2015 Home and Family hosted a dynasty reunion for one episode on the Hallmark Channel. It assembled former cast members from the series, including Pamela Sue Martin, Al Corley, Gordon Thompson, John James and Pamela Bellwood. The reunion episode focused on the cast's memories of the show both on and off screen. A collection of gowns worn by the female characters as well as members of the cast participating in several cooking craft and fashion segments. The reunion episode also featured a new opening of the show's iconic theme song, which included home and family hosts Mark Steins and Christina Ferrari. Linda Evans did not participate on air in the reunion episode but sent a message to the cast, which was read on air. Commercial tie-ins the creations of series costume designer Nolan Miller became so popular that Dynasty spawned its own line of women's apparel called the Dynasty Collection, a series of haute couture designs based on costumes worn by Joan Collins, Linda Evans, and Diane Carroll. A men's fashion line followed. Esther Shapiro herself came up with the idea to produce licensed products that included sheets and towels, jewelry and furs. Forever Crystal, Perfume and Carrington, Men's Cologne. The Crystal Light Beverage hired Linda Evans as a spokesperson due to her character's name. Two novels were published based on scripts from early episodes Dynasty and Alexis Returns, written by Eileen Lotman. In 1984, Doubleday, Dolphin published the companion book Dynasty, the authorized biography of the Carringtons, which included an introduction by Esther Shapiro. The authorized biography featured storyline synopses in the form of extended biographies of the main characters' descriptions of primary locations and dozens of photos from the series. DVD Releases the first season of Dynasty was released on Region 1 DVD on April 19, 2005, by 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment. The rights to subsequent seasons reverted to CBS DVD in November 2006. Seasons 1 through 4 were made available on iTunes in May 2012. The show is rated PG for parental guidance in Australia and PG in New Zealand. For adult themes. Reboot series. The Shapiros announced on January 12, 2011 that they had written a Dynasty prequel feature film script set in the 1960s, and were shopping it to studios for a possible film franchise. In a September 2011 interview, Dynasty actress Joan Collins chatted about a Dynasty television revival. I've been in constant contact with Esther Shapiro who wrote it, and apparently they've written a script. In September 2016, it was announced that a Dynasty reboot was in development at the CW co-written by Josh Schwartz, Stephanie Savage and Sally Patrick. The project received a series order in May 2017 with the Shapiros also producing. The new series finds heiress Fallon facing off against her soon-to-be stepmother Crystal, a Hispanic woman. The CW's Dynasty features Grant Show as Blake Natalie Kelly as Crystal, and Elizabeth Gillies as Fallon. Other cast members include Sam Adagoke as Jeff, Robert Christopher Riley as Blake's chauffeur Michael James Mackay as Stephen, Rafael de la Fuente as Sam Flores, a gay male version of Sammy Joe. Alan Dale as Carrington Major Domo and as Nick Wexler as Matthew Blaisdell. Brianna Brown as Claudia and Wakey Mahollis as Jeff's sister Monique Colby. The series premiered in the U.S. on October 11, 2017.
Brought to you by Wikivd.com. Would you like to know more?